Hey there, and welcome back. Glad to see you here. At the Toma Vocal Production Channel, we talk about everything that has to do with being a better singer. Today, we're going to start at the very beginning. I happen to be sitting on a stool right now with four legs on it. The reason there's four legs is because it provides a solid base or foundation. Singing is much the same way. We have to establish our singing on a solid foundation that will allow us to build on top of that, to be able to explore a variety of styles as well as vocal sounds. So today we're going to talk about four basics in establishing a strong singing foundation. All right, so before we get started today, make sure to hit that like button below. And I always appreciate a subscription and hit that notification bell. That way you'll know whenever I post new content on this channel. All right, so getting started with foundation. First of all, a little bit of a bridge over into sports. Phil Jackson, the legendary NBA basketball coach, was well known for requiring all of his new players coming onto his team to go through a retraining of the fundamentals or basics in basketball. It didn't matter how talented they were or how experienced they were, they were each required to revisit those fundamental skills like footwork or dribbling or passing. Every singer, no matter what level you're at in singing, can be benefited by going back and revisiting the fundamentals of singing. Checking these four basics. Number one, posture. Singing is athletic. I know it looks like that singer up there is very relaxed and it just comes out naturally, but a good singer is using a variety of muscles in their body and they're working hard to produce that quality of sound. And so we have to have a posture of strength when we sing. So the basics in posture. First, our feet. We want to make sure they're planted and give us a solid foundation, right? I would say about shoulders width apart is a good place to start. I know there's various different uh, foot placements, but if you put them about shoulders width apart below you, that's a good place to have them. Make sure your knees are flexible, not bent, but also not tight or locked. Our hips are on a hinge. You can stick your tail end out or you can tuck it underneath you and engage your abdomen. And that's what we want to do. We want to have an engaged abdomen. Our rib cage is a lot like a bird cage. I want you to think of lifting it up and over your lungs. Don't let it collapse down and compress your lungs. Keep that rib cage lifted, the chest up. Shoulders should be back and your hands should fall just naturally by your side. And our neck and head should be in proper alignment. We don't want to lift the head, especially to hit a high note, or lower the head to try and hit a lower note. That doesn't help you at all. Try and keep it nicely aligned like you're being measured for height. Now, posture needs to be strong, but we don't want it to be stiff either. So don't let it become rigid. Keep it fluid and flexible, but good strong posture. Number two, your mouth. Now, of course, you have to get your mouth open to sing. If you didn't, we'd call it humming, right? <laughs> but making sure that your mouth is consistent in its shape is really important because we want consistency in our sound. We don't want the shape and the sound of our voice to be constantly changing. Generally speaking, we want our mouth to be in a rectangular shape, tall rectangle, not a wide rectangle, a tall dropping our jaw down, bringing the corners of our mouth in, and lifting our lips off of our teeth just a little bit to show the top and bottom teeth. That creates good projection. We also want to make sure that our tongue is lowered and resting just behind our lower bottom teeth. We don't want to retract it or curl it up. So a good mouth should be shaped like this. Now, that's really easy when you're singing an open vowel sound like an ah, right? Ah, pretty easy. It gets a little harder when the vowel sound is smaller, like an e or an u. But we still want to try and get that mouth open so the projection is consistent. Ah, e, u. 
We don't want to let it close down. Ha, hoo. It changes the sound too much. Number three, breathing. Now, I know you know how to breathe because that's how you stay alive. But breathing in an athletic way for singing, that's a different prospect. And so, what I want you to think of is breathing down low and deep, filling up our lungs entirely with air. That allows us to have the pressure, the air pressure we need as we push the air out to be able to create good vocal sound and also to have sufficient air for our singing phrases. We don't want to run out of air halfway through a phrase, right? We want to be able to sustain it. Now, the common mistake that a lot of vocalists make is that they focus up here in the upper part of their chest when they breathe. <sighs> like that. And that's really a shallow breath. It's not good breathing. As a matter of fact, what I want you to do right now is just imagine that you're laying down in bed, falling asleep. You're just drifting off to sleep. Now take your hand and place it on your lower abdomen. And as you breathe, as you're falling to sleep, feel what happens to your hand. Did you feel it? Yeah. The, the upper chest is not rising and lowering at all. It stays pretty stationary. The movement is happening down here in your lower abdomen. And that's how we want to breathe when we sing. We want to think of extending or expanding down here below and, and filling up our waistline. Put your hands into the small of your waist right here and breathe in low and deep until you feel that waistline begin to fill in. That's a good deep breath. And we want to breathe that way every time you breathe when you sing. All right, now the last one is diaphragmic support, or support for short. Now granted, breathing and diaphragmic support are really interconnected. It's a cycle, they work off of each other. But for our purposes, we're gonna subdivide them so that we can focus on them separately. So breathing is about inhaling the air in, filling your lungs with air, right? Diaphragmic support is about pushing that air back out in a steady, strong stream of air, and it presses against those vocal folds as they are brought together in close proximity, creating what we call compression. In order to get that air through those vocal folds, it gets the vocal folds vibrating, and that's what gives us vocal sound, okay? So pushing that air out, we want it to be strong, and we want it to be steady. Now one thing that you can do to kind of feel your diaphragm support working is by taking your fingers and putting it just below your sternum, right here, the top of your stomach, that's where the diaphragm is. Take your other hand and put it here in the small of your waist. Take a nice deep breath in like we just talked about. And then we're gonna do five hisses. Really strong. Make a lot of compression between your tongue and your teeth to create that hiss. And you'll feel your diaphragm and your epigastrial muscles here on the side. They'll contract as they're pushing that air out. They have to push against that resistance. That is the support that we're looking for. And let's do that again. Breathe in and hiss. Now, of course, we want to do that with our voice. So now we're going to do it with a nice strong ha. Breathe in and ha, 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 ha. We're not even singing yet. We're just vocalizing a nice strong projected sound. And your diaphragm automatically kicks in. Now here's the trick. Sometimes when we sing, our brain goes into a different mode and it thinks, relax, right? You don't need to push air out and it quits supporting our sound. We've got to work against that and reprogram the brain to make sure that diaphragmic support, right, is expansive whenever we're singing. We never let it go into a lazy or rested mode. All right, so here's your challenge. In each of your rehearsal sessions, focus on these four fundamental basics of technique. I even encourage you maybe to just choose one of them or two during a rehearsal session and focus on them. Maybe you're breathing and your mouth and you just monitor that and make sure that it's working the way that it should be and fix it if you need to. Remember, practice doesn't make perfect. 
perfect practice makes perfect. So don't allow yourself to practice using bad technique. It just entrenches in our mind, our muscle memory, bad habits. Force yourself to work towards implementing good solid technique. I also encourage all of my students to practice in front of a large mirror so they can see themselves and get immediate feedback. You can see your posture, you can see your mouth, you can see even see yourself breathing and be able to fix it and change it even as you're singing. Got that? All right. So if this helps you out, make sure you hit that like button down below. Give me a big thumbs up. Also hit the subscribe button. I would love to see you as a subscriber here. Hit that notification bell so that you can be up to date on all of the great information that we'll be posting here at the Toma Vocal Production Channel. Until next time, see ya.